As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. The opening scene to a film is quite possibly the most important scene for any filmmaker. It's that first few minutes a director must take advantage of in order to keep the viewer invested in the production. In the past, newly released films were only ever first shown in theatres. The pressure for a filmmaker to make that opening scene interesting just wasn't there as much as it is today. For most of film history, a filmmaker's most gripping scene didn't need to be at the beginning of the film. People would rarely just leave the theatre straight away or take their DVD or VHS tape back to the video store immediately. Today, however, everything is online. Over the past year, for obvious reasons, films have been first released on streaming sites, meaning people, such as me, who can't get invested in a film during that opening sequence will likely click off the movie they are watching. So today, more than ever before, the opening scene is the most important scene of the film. However, the greatest two opening scenes ever aren't from recent releases. They are from 20th century films. So what the heck are they then? Get to the point. <laughs> If you've used the film ratings website Internet Movie Database, then there's a high chance that you've been to the profile of The Shawshank Redemption. Why is this profile significant? Well, it's the highest rated film on the website, making it the highest quality or the best movie of all time, according to IMDb. Personally, I believe a large part of this film's greatness has to do with its opening scene, which I'll dissect right now. But before I do, it's important for me not to reveal anything about this film just in case the viewers watching this have never seen it. Because most of the time when people watch the opening scene of a film, they really just know nothing about it. So if you've never seen The Shawshank Redemption, here's how it starts. Even just that opening music is enough for me to get excited about watching this film. It's of course Filmmaking 101 to have a really good opening score, but very rarely is it this perfect right away. That's just the opening music though, as the camera cuts to our main character, clearly extremely inebriated, sitting in his car outside a random house. The great thing here is how the scene is set. That shot of him drinking in his car, the house he's in front of, and the music lets the audience pretty quickly figure out what's going on here. They're able to easily figure out where this man exactly is, why he's there, and why he's also intoxicated. It's clearly painfully obvious, but the filmmaker letting the audience figure it out for themselves is the best part. We have the accused at the scene of the crime, we have footprints, tire tracks, we have bullets strewn on the ground which bear his fingerprints. The courtroom scene shows us how evil the opposing lawyer is towards Andy Dufresne, our main character, and just how easily swayed the judge is after the lawyer endlessly pleads for Andy's imprisonment. The unfairness of the situation is of course what evokes anger in the viewers, but it's the sentencing of Andy Dufresne that just makes this scene for me. I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. One for each of your victims. So be it. The scented face of Dufresne in the shot as he looks shocked at his sentencing cultivated by the hammer to the heart the judge hits down completes a truly remarkable opening scene. Only the most simplistic and unimaginative of filmgoers would turn the film off at this point. This scene is just the how-to guide on making the perfect opening scene to just hook your audience into your film. Now, the second opening scene is much simpler and shorter than the previous mentioned one. The Green Mile's opening scene shows us a bunch of what seems to be police rangers going through cotton fields seemingly trying to find a criminal. The film doesn't tell us who they are trying to find, what the story is entailing, nope. It just shows us a man finding a small ripped up doll's dress that was loosely stuck to one of the cotton plants. That's enough for the audience to figure out very quickly that this is a distressed father searching for his little girl. This of course becomes all the more powerful and moving as the film progresses. Just how dead and weedy looking the plants are accompanied by the guns in Redneck's hands gives the viewer a somber and eerie feeling. It's topped up by the slow tracking of the editing that title card, and finally the disturbing whispers of Wild Bill that have been deeply ingrained into the memory of Paul Edgecombe. You love your sister, you make it in the last and it happens. All I can say is you've got to watch this movie if you haven't already yet. It's just remarkable. All of this makes for a powerful and goosebump inducing opening scene. It's just too moving and too interesting for any viewer to not want to continue watching, as the urge to see what happens is just 
far too strong at this point, even after only 40 seconds. I remember watching this for the first time at school of all places, meaning I wasn't consciously choosing to watch this film at all. However, as soon as I saw that opening 45 seconds, I was just hooked to the story. That is how you make an opening scene to your film. You want to know the most amazing thing about these two opening scenes? Yeah, yeah, you probably already knew if you know these movies very well. They were directed, yep, by the same guy, Frank Darabont, my favorite filmmaker of all time. I usually sometimes despise filmmakers or even YouTubers who make very few films or very few YouTube videos on their channels, but Darabont perfectly constructed these two stories when he put together these Stephen King story adaptations. And yes, two stories by the aptly named Story King. It's his opening scenes that in my opinion is where his legacy lies, as his two most successful and iconic works have the greatest two movie openings ever.